Hey, Hofstra fans, it's time once again for the WV Masons Coaches Report. I'm Rob Joyce, joined as always by the head coach of Hofstra Women's Basketball, Krista Coburn Stavesky. Coach, how are you? Doing all right. Rob. Last week you go up to Boston in the season finale of Fall 80 81 to Northeastern. What are your thoughts on the game? Uh, you know, it was uh, a very different game than the first one because uh, uh, of the tempo and, and the score. And, you know, it's kind of like. Uh, However, this needs to be played. We just need to win this game. So defensively, we did not do a very good job adjusting and responding to the change that they made during the game. Knowing that the game, it mattered in terms of seeding, but either way, you're playing Northeastern this week. So what's the mindset playing a team twice in a row? Well, I mean, it's just about us getting a win. You know, they, they weren't at that one stint, you know, 18 points better than us, but, you know, that they, they, they ran away with it and we cut it back. You know, and it's, it's um, really handling those runs I've talked about all year long. And, you know, whether it's a different component that's causing us to, to knock ourselves back a little bit is, is how we handle it, how we handle it on the floor. And, you know, there was a couple turnovers there and some quick shots, you know, that turn the momentum toward Northeastern's favor. So, you know, we have to stop that. So whether it's the second time you play them or whether it's the third time you play them, you know, it's just it's really about us controlling, you know, our own ability uh, when things happen to us. You alluded to it the first game, 59-57, the second game, 88-81. Which style do you prefer against a team like Northeastern? I mean, you know, to me, it, you know, as long as we win the game, you know, if it's in the 70s, um, you know, it, it just, it doesn't matter to me. I, I prefer to win the game, and that's the most important component. You know, we did everything we did at home to beat them. We just um, offensively struggled, you know, which has been uh, a, a little bit of our, of our issues. But... Um, you know, to hold them, play some of the best teams we've ever played, and then not be able to put up some numbers, you know, that's that's not ideal. So it would be like to play great defense and be able to put some numbers up would be ideal. They hit 11 threes in the game. That's something they do on a fairly consistent basis. How do you close out from deep? Yeah, I mean, six, five, six plus of those were in transition. Um, some miscommunication during substitution, you know, they just find a way. If you have your hand down, they're going to be pulling it. and you know, guarding outside the arc. We have a tendency to be there but not have our hand up. And, you know, it's just been a point of emphasis all week and, you know, control what we can control, no substitutions when you come in um, and find people in transition. And how much do you look at both tapes heading into it now? You have a week off and you play the Huskies again this week. I mean, a lot. Uh, you know, they played Wilmington. I've watched that film. But it's really about, like, you know, the changes that they made throughout the game, what we were doing, how we needed to, to counteract what they were doing. And, um, you know, it's really just about – pretty much our games. So do you have a super game plan with a week to prepare? Or do you go back to your <laughs> fundamentals and worry about your team? I mean, you go back to your fundamentals, but you tweak. You put in, you know, things here and there to have in your pocket when, uh, you know, when that momentum shift is happening or you want to, you know, definitely, you know, get a change of pace. But, you know, it's still core fundamental defensively, you know, for us this week. And then the seniors stepping up the last couple of games, Candace Bond finishes the year, double figures, five of her last six. Yeah. Is this what you've been waiting for offensively? Yeah, I wish we could flip that back and start the beginning of the season with that. I mean, you know, look, she's an option to score, um, always an option to score. It's just kind of, you know, getting her to see that option. And, uh, you know, I'm glad she's doing it now. And then Devin Green, she had a great senior day. She follows that up in the next game as well. Is there anything different that she's been doing? No, I mean, you know, you always play with a little bit of motivation when the end is near. You know, you hear all these stories, and your seniors are going to have to carry us to the tournament, the upperclassmen and the seniors, and the freshmen can, you know, definitely piece in. As much as we get from them, there's going to be a way added bonus, and, and we need something. I mean, we need, we need another guard to step up for sure. Um, but, you know, you expect, you know, the seniors to have a heightened sense of awareness that this could be it. And then in terms of this upcoming week, you play Northeastern again, but you have the CAA banquet yeah. tomorrow. Really, there aren't really a lot of surprises. You expect Shantae Evans, all CAA first team. But Candace Bond, I think, deserves Defensive Player of the Year. Kind of make her case for it. Oh, that would be really nice. You know, it's something we have uh, fought for every single year. She's been on the docket, and it's been some things you had to kind of swallow your pride a little bit over the past. And, you know, some folks that, that get it that I felt like maybe, maybe, maybe I can't even say the record was better when we finished you know, in the top four. So, um, you know, it, it, you know, I, I've been, I've been pleading that all year long. She is, you know, by far, I believe the best defensive player in the league. People just dread her guarding her. Her hands are so quick. You hear this from other coaches along the way. Those that, you know, she always obviously has to defend the best player on every single team. Sometimes two and three players would switch her as the day, as the night's progressing. So, you know, it's just no doubt in my mind. And I've told her that, I've been telling her that like all year long, you know, and she's the kind of kid that, doesn't go to her head, doesn't get big headed, you know, she just keeps working and working and working for her goals and uh, that would be just a really nice way to exit out uh, winning a championship and her having a, her having a player of the year would be really nice. So, you know, keep our fingers crossed and, you know, she's done the work 
her body of work has spoke for itself for the past four years, so you just hope that politically you know, people do the right thing. Of course you have to worry about Friday, but how do the coaches handle possibly playing multiple games multiple days? I mean, it's what you prepare your kids for, whether you play preseason tournaments, back-to-back -back games, and, you know, this always comes to this. You know, it always comes. You know, a lot of the coaches, um, Coach Khan and Coach Farr, have been, you know, bringing in uh, every time of the huddles. People, teams like Liberty that won four in a row, or people that are fifth seeds that are winning the tournament or playing their tournament championship. And, you know, this is why they call it March Madness. So, you know, this is what we prepare for all year long to get down to this final weekend. In terms of Northeastern, Deanna Kirkhoff, she had a big game last week. How do you slow her down? Yeah, you know, I mean, it takes a village really with her. It, you know, it can't be all on Bond's shoulders, and, and Bond's got to stay out of foul trouble. You know, she knows that. That was the first, you know, text she texted me, like, after the game, you know, she, we just, you know, I have to stay on the floor, and, you know, and, and we have other folks that can defend as well. And, you know, we got hurt on the inside game, too. We didn't play very good uh, post defense in that game, and I think there's a lot of pride that needs to be involved that, you know, we can play a lot better against this team. And, you know, and some shots were fired. That, you know, Northeastern feels like they can score at will against us. So I think, um, you know, that kind of gave us a little extra motivation to prove that uh, that just doesn't happen, you know. So we're ready to roll. I think we're ready to roll. You could potentially play Friday, Saturday, Sunday this weekend. How do you make some noise? Uh, win the first one because you're not making much noise if you're one and done. Um, you know, and then you then you just go in with house money against Delaware. I mean, it's just like uh, we map, you know, that's a game that doesn't scare us. And it never has, whether they have the you know third best player in the nation or not. Um, obviously, you know that they're going to step up with their five seniors plus, more than that. So, um, but it'll just be a fun battle, you know, to get to that and then play whatever after that would be just uh, it would be gravy. So, you know, it should be a fun weekend, a relaxed weekend. But a lot, of, a lot of um, a lot of a lot of fight though for the first one here. We got a lot to prove for our to ourselves and to the team here. All right, head coach Kristen Kilburn, the best. Good luck this week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hofstra's down to the CA tournament this weekend. They take on Northeastern on Friday. Check out GoHofstra.com for all CA tournament information. I'm Rob Joyce. Thanks, Hofstra fans, for tuning in to the WB Mason's Coaches Report with Kristen Kilburn, the best.